Welcome. This training is called Quality Assurance Responsibilities for Supervisors. This training is specifically for therapists, TBS supervisors, and PM supervisors. If you are a nurse or a NP supervisor, this video is not for you. You can stop this video. Please ask your supervisor to provide you with the right training module for you to complete. My name is Gabra Bryson. I am a QA and training manager here at BioQuest. I will be providing this QA training manager and also other trainings that you may be um, needing to complete. Um, if you have not completed a practice audit on a coworker, if you have not learned how to complete chart audits, please make sure you complete that prior to completing this trainer, training. We want to make sure that everybody knows how to do chart audits as a regular staff member prior to becoming a supervisor and doing the responsibilities of chart audits for, for staff, okay? Um, you will have the following handouts. Um, if you go to the one drive that your supervisor has provided for you, you want to go to the QA and responsibilities folder. So I will share my screen so you ensure that you are selecting the right item. So this is the folder that you should be in. Under the supervisor training for actual training, you want to go to the QA responsibilities folder. You should have the following six handouts. One, supervisor QA responsibilities, therapy and TBS. Two, reviewing chart audits. Three, audit training instructions. Four, mini clinical chart audit directions. Five, mini clinical chart audit form. So this is the actual form. And then six is the supervisor QA responsibility acknowledgement form. So at the end of this training module, training module, you want to ensure that you are printing this form out at least and turning this into your supervisor, stating that you have completed this training. Um, for this training, there is no quiz as in other um, video modules that you have, you have or will complete um, because we wanna make sure that you guys are taking notes on these actual forms and that you were able to utilize these forms because um, we will be doing chart audits on a regular monthly basis. And then you'll also be doing clinical mini chart audits on a monthly basis as a supervisor too. Okay, um, so please make sure you have at least these uh, six handouts um, or if you uh, would rather have them on OneDrive and have them open, you certainly can. Um, we're going to go to the first handout QA, quality assurance, quality assurance, QA, responsibilities uh, for therapists, TBS, and PMs, okay? If you have a new hire, it is important to notify the QA and training manager. So a practice audit is assigned and completed during their VPBS specific training. Um, so as I stated, you should have already done this as a new hire. Um, in, Q, in your VPBS specific training, all new hires will do a practice audit on a coworker. And the QA and training manager will ensure that is being done in that training. That new hire will send it to that QA and training manager um, and it will be considered a random chart audit for current staff. Um, please make sure you notify myself, um, Gabrielle Bryson, once again, the QA and training manager, that you have a new hire so we can put that on our tracker and ensuring that the new hire um, gets that practice audit. Um, please make sure that you are also following the hiring process form and notifying us as soon as possible. So as soon as you get that acceptance letter, um, QA and training manager should be one of the persons that you notify as soon as possible. When a current staff leaves or terminated, include QA and training manager in email notifying their departure to remove them from the upcoming audit list. 
If staff did not complete their audit before departure, it will be your responsibility to complete the audit and turn it in on time. If you have notice of the departure, ensure that all past, all past audit corrections and supervision is completed prior to departure. So, especially if they give the two weeks or one month notice, that should be your cue to ensure that everything is in compliance before that person leaves. Um, we want to try to prevent any new hires to have an overload of compliance documents that they have to complete upon new hire. So working with that staff member to get those treatment plans updated, working on any consents that need to be done, ensuring assessments are need to be done, um, and then your past audits and corrections, supervision, ensuring all those items are done. Um, if they were assigned a um, chart audit um, for you, you, you want to ensure that they complete that before they leave. If not, as it, stated, as it stated, it will be your responsibility to ensure that is completed. So most likely you will have to complete that chart audit yourself and turn it in to myself or Kim. Ken Weitzman is the other QA and training manager by the end of the month. Each billable staff member will do monthly chart audits on a coworker of the same discipline. As a supervisor, you will want to ensure your staff and your audits are turned in on time. Okay, so we'll go over the next handout, which is to review of the chart audits, um, but we do chart audits on a monthly basis. Um, either myself or Kim will be sending out the chart audits, okay? Um, towards the end of the month, that will be due for that following month, okay? So if it is April, you will need to ensure that April audits are done by the end of April. Those initial chart audits are done and sent in to Kim or I by the end of April. Once you have received the audit from your staff, please follow directions in the reviewing chart audit handout on how to review the audit for accuracy. Okay, so that is um, handout num number two that we'll review here in a couple minutes. All initial audits will need to be turned in by the last day of the month, no later than 5 p.m. to QA and training manager. If your staff have not turned them in on time, you will need to follow up with that staff member, provide them with a new deadline, no more than a week, to get them in. Notify QA and training manager of yours and your staff's plan, so potential POA, plan of action, to ensure they are turning in on time the following month. Last day of the month, email QA and training manager notifying staff that was not turned in on time and your follow-up to get these turned in. Um, so we want su supervisors to be proactive. You guys should be keeping track of all of your staff's audits and ensuring that um, you give your staff a deadline before the end of the month. So generally, most people give into their 20th or the week before the end of the month to ensure that you have time to review them and that you are turning in to myself or Kim before the end of the month. On the last day of the month, you should be emailing Kim or I stating that all of them have been turned in and or one or two or a couple are missing and the reason and, and when they should be turning, be turning them into us by, okay? Um, so we want to reduce... Um, staff turning them in on late and making sure things are being turned in on time. On a regular basis, minimally monthly, you want to go into the 2021 clinical audit tracker and notate all dates. Um, you will utilize the audit tracking instructions handout on how to complete the spreadsheet correctly. So um, I will ensure to train you on that one. Um, some people have a little hard time um, putting in the dates correctly. Um, so that handout, you definitely wanna take any notes that's gonna help you understand um, best for your learning needs to ensure that you're completing that spreadsheet, the Excel spreadsheet correctly. Last but not least, you will do one mini clinical chart audit review on each staff member per month. Once completed, they will be put on the OneDrive and designated folder 
to be reviewed by your clinical supervisor or clinical director. Um, see the cl mini clinical chart audit directions handout. And that will be the last handout that we will review in this training module, okay? All right, so let's review that first handout number two on how to review chart audits for accuracy. Okay, so as a supervisor, you will need to keep track of your staff's chart audits. Ensure they are completed correctly and turned into QA and training manager on time. Um, so that is by the end of the month. At the beginning of each month, the QA and training manager will send out, of the, send out the audit assigned for the month to clinical director or supervisor of the region. Clinical director or designated supervisors will send audits to staff for completion. Supervisors will have two team meetings per month. The second team meeting of the month will include completing initial audits and ensuring all corrections are completed for a previous month audit. Um, so I know that some, I think the residential um, VRS team leads, they complete them within their supervision. So you guys should have four supervisions a month weekly supervision and one of those supervisions you will be completing the chart audit with your PM. Um, therapists and TBS, um, they will have team meetings. You can send it out to your team ahead of time, but by the end of that team meeting, those chart audits should be sent in to you. Um, so that is the way that we're going to ensure that people are completing chart audits, um, allowing them to do that in team meetings. So if they have any questions, they're able to ask you at that time. Also, we're going to ensure that corrections are completed by the end of that team meeting also um, for that previous month. So you may be doing April's initials and then March corrections in the same month. When staff send you their audits, review to ensure every line is completed in column E. Every line needs to be marked yes, no, or NA, and the top section filled out correctly. Ensure staff use the items from dropdown and all explanations are done at the bottom, not within column E. Okay. Before you turn those audits into me or into Kim, every single line needs to be filled out. There should be no blank answers. It should be yes, why, n, no, or na, not applicable. Okay. Um, in those columns, um, they should be selecting only things that are required for that. There should be no explanations in column E of the items um, for the answers. All explanations of why they selected no or why they selected yes or na um, will need to be at the bottom of the audit. All right, so at the top, ensure all sections are completed. Ensure the right region is selected. So that's the first one. Ensure the correct month of when audits were assigned is selected. 2021 is already selected. Next line is the staff member that is being audited. So it's not the st your staff member, but the person that they're auditing needs to go in that next line. Ensure correct dis discipline is selected. So therapists only select therapy. TBS, PM, select TBS. And the client number is entered and not the client name, okay? So this goes into a data collection form. Um, so we want to not have client names in it for confidentiality reasons. We want to ensure that the client number is there. If the staff member, staff member put the client name and the client number, please delete the client name. Next section. Um, we want to pull the client's chart in Smart Care and skim through the chart to ensure staff complete the chart audit correctly. When opening the charts, look at the client information C section to ensure all areas are completed. So right at face value will be the general section where you can find the phone number and the address. And then if you click on the demographics subtab, um, you will find the race and ethnicity. And then the con emergency contact is in the contacts button, okay? And that is where you'll be able to find those four items for that chart audit. 
Okay. The rest of the audit will be reviewed in the document section of the client's chart. Um, so make sure on the left-hand side in the banner that you and staff member are selecting the word documents, not clinical documents. You do not wanna go inside the cascading banner, just clicking on the word documents. For consent release in Smart Care, it'll be labeled as consent bundle or individually as consent for treatment and release of information. Informed consent should be the forever consent. Want to ensure staff notate dates on the consent and ensure it's after March 2020 for the audit to be marked Y, yes, and it is the forever consent. Even if it's valid, but using the old consent for staff are to mark no if using the wrong form. If client has a guardian, want to ensure that they are signing off on them. Verbal consents are okay, but we want to ensure staff are actively getting written consents within the six months. Okay. Um, also, we you know we want to ensure that standard authorization form. If there's anybody in the client's chart that we're talking to, um, we're getting that release of information. Um, it is Ohio regulation that that is updated every 12 months, even though our consent is provision of treatment, um, and is required for that to be updated every 12 months. Um, if our client is in facilities. Um, it is okay for that staff member to put NA because it's not required for all facility clients to have a release of information since we have a contract with them. Um, we do not have to have a release of information for residential or day services since we do have a contract per se with them. But nine times out of 10, they should have a release of information for the SSA and any other providers that are working with the client. Um, so minimally, all clients should have one. Um, even though they are residential for the county board for us to coordinate with them and any other day or residential services provider that is outside of ViaQuest um, on that release of information for coordination. So we want to ensure the filter at the top are selected all dates to look at initial dates. Okay, um, so you guys should have learned how to uh, select that filter at the top when you see those, it would be selected as um, within the last year. Um, we want to ensure that those dates are all dates and select the apply filter um, so we can answer the initial clinical documents information. Especially if the client has been here for a couple years. Um, we started using Smart, or, yes, Smart Care in 2019. Um, so, if the, so it's been a couple years for sure that some clients may have been here for a while. Initial clinical documents would not show up as the filter says within the last year. So you need to change it to all dates to, to answer the initial clinical documents. All right, so all clients will have an initial assessment or psychiatric evaluation. And start, ensure staff put dates of initial assessment or evaluation all questions in this section are marked yes or no, not an A, okay? Um, as they learn in their um, practice audit class, um, if it is a client who is pre-smart care, so if they were in our previous system called Avatar, um, it was responsible, um, it was the therapist's responsibility or the NP's responsibility to ensure that all clients received an initial assessment um, by April 2019, or the NP completes a full uh, psyche eval on their first visit with that client, okay? Um, so they can mark that as yes, if the client is an old client, if the assessment was done before April 2019, or that psychiatric evaluation is fully completed with the AIMS. All right, for treatment plans, so check the initial ITP, also known as care plan and smart care. The first build session should be the effective date of the care plan. Please make sure you check the dates. Initial outcome measures can be within the initial assessment and scores will need to be completed. If there was a psyche valve, 
outcome measures should be completed as separate documents and open to input scores. NA should be selected for scores if there is not one completed. Okay, so initial treatment plan was it done? The first billable session. Um, it should that effective date of that ITP should be the effective date of that first progress note completed after the assessment or evaluation. Um, so unfortunately, some people, especially if it's old clients, that answer that question may be marked as no. Um, staff members should know. Um, and moving forward, especially for new clients, that effective date for that treatment plan needs to be the same date that they're billing that for that initial appointment. Okay. Um, supervisors have to sign off on it. If it if they're if the staff member is not an LPCC, LSW, LISW, I'm sorry, and IMFT. For the outcome measures, it needs to be both, not just once. We need the GAD7 and PHQ9 completed. Okay, they need to ensure that they're opening up the actual forms in the assessment or in the paper documents that are scanned in to actually put in the scores of the GAD7 and the PHQ9. Um, the scores go all the way up to 21. So there's zero all the way up to 21. For the next section, if the client has been receiving services more than 11 months, the updated clinical documents need to be filled out. If not, the whole section is marked as NA. And also, if clients are TBS only based on the psyche eval, um, psyche vows are only completed once at the beginning of treatment. Um, so this section would also be marked as NA. Um, it's the same questions as before. Um, it's just that it's the annual update. So especially if it is a therapy client, therapists should be completing assessments annually for all their clients. Um, so if you are a therapist supervisor, these questions should automatically be answered yes or no, only if there is a TBS or TBS client um, within potentially a facility, these questions may be marked as NA. All right, so the next section here. So the full chart should be skimmed to ensure that, that care plans, sorry, are completed every six months. Ensure one has been completed within the last six months. And we want to ensure outcome measures were also completed with every six months review or assessment. Most recent outcome measure scores should be notated in the audit. Okay, um, so making sure all these questions are answered here. Uh, most recent ITP in the last six months. Was there a care plan in the last six months? And then since the initial ITP, has that staff members or other staff that has been working with that client updated the treatment plan every six months since the initial till current? Yes or no? Once again, the treatment plan has to be reflective of the assessment, author and supervisor needs to complete it. If the care plan says um, the status is to be re and to be reviewed status, that means the supervisor has not completed it, signed off on it. Um, supervisors would be marked no, that they have not signed off on it. Author could be marked as yes, because the author did sign it. They're just waiting for their supervisor to sign off on it. Okay. Um, GAD7 and the ITPs are both every six months, minimally. Um, staff can definitely do them more frequently than that, um, but it's minimally every six months. There are some staff members who like to use the assessment as a six month mark when completing the GAD7 and PHQ9 since they are embedded within the assessment. That is okay. Um, so it may be paper form, outcome measures, and then the annual assessment where the outcome measures are embedded within that assessment. I um, mean, if that is the case, um, and it is the annual time for that um, assessment, um, you can open up that GAD7, I'm sorry, that assessment to find that GAD7 and PHQ9. And once again, complete the scores for the current GAD7 and PHQ9. So next section here, your staff should have reviewed three progress notes of their coworkers. 
All answers need to be answered Y or N, and there is only an A for a whole section if there is not enough progress notes to be reviewed. Ensure they put the dates of the progress note they are reviewing and comments on the progress notes in the section below if it is not, and not at the end, uh, uh, end with the rest of the corrections. Okay, so we want to ensure that we do have them put the date here so we know what progress note they're referring to. Any suggestions, comments are made underneath it and not at the end of the form. Okay, um, so when you're reviewing this section, you can skim through. All answers need to be yes or no. Okay, there is no NA. All questions are applicable when reviewing a progress note. The only time is it NA is if the whole section is marked as NA and they're notating in the comments box here no progress notes to review. Only one progress note or only two progress notes um, documented for the staff member. Okay. All right, next section. All VRS clients are required to have a safety plan and questions should be marked yes or no. If in the assessment or progress note staff you are reviewing Notates, notations of suicide, homicide, ideations, or self-harming behaviors, it is required for the answers to, to be yes or no. Okay, so the safety plan is towards the end because it's a combination of the assessment and the three progress notes that you just reviewed. Um, based on what is put in the assessment, based on what is put in the progress notes, is determining on how if you answer these two questions, yes or no. Um, you can mark them both as NA if it doesn't apply to that person or in that client. Once again, residential clients, you have to have at least one paper one. So the first question is always gonna be a yes or no for residentials, um, PMs. Um, reviewing it in your progress notes is only required if they notate any suicide, homicide, ideations, or self-harming behaviors. If the client has been discharged, questions can be answered and changed to yes or no accordingly. Um, so when we assign audits, we ensure that staff members have dealt with in the last week or two. Um, so hopefully all the audits will be current actual staff members, or actual clients, I'm sorry. Um, and these should stay and are notated in the assessment automatically as an A, okay. Um, but once again, if the client has been discharged in the time frame from us assigning the audit to the person actually doing the audit, they can certainly answer those two questions. Was the form completed? Um, they need to open up the form and see the reason why that staff member or that client was discharged to answer the next question. Discharge letter sent to client and scanned in smart care. So if the client passed away or they're being discharged from one of our facilities, we are not required to uh, upload a discharge letter. If it is a community client, non-facility, non-client that's passed away, we should ensure that, I, uh, I'm sorry, a discharge letter was scanned into the chart. If there are any marked ends throughout the chart audit, staff should be should have done explanations of why they marked in. Okay, so some of your corrections needed anything marked in in column E, put details here. Okay, so if they marked in on race or ethnicity, they should be notating them there. Um, client's treatment plan wasn't done the first session. Um, treatment plan is expired last month. Please ensure they update it. So those are some common main examples on what staff members should be putting there. Um, only time that they wouldn't be putting anything in there is if the chart audit was 100%. So there's no corrections to be made. There was no errors in the past. Everything was done correctly. All right, last page for this document. Okay, so this is about your corrections and supervisions that you will ensure that are completed of your staff member. So your staff should be reviewing everything that was marked in throughout the audits. The corrections should be completed and staff should start working on corrections as soon as audit is received. All corrections should be completed by the second team meeting of the month and email to supervisor. So they should be emailing them to you. 
Staff should be notating the corrections they made at the bottom of the audit and the details of corrections made by provider. Okay, so there's this colored box, this brown box there at the bottom. Um, made corrections, completed treatment plan, ensured race and ethnicity is, race and ethnicity is completed in the client's charts. Emergency contact is updated. Okay, contacted therapist to ensure assessment is completed by the end of the month. Okay, so those are some things that they, those are some examples of what they can put in that box there. Okay. Staff will want to sign the audit stating that they made the corrections and their client's chart is in compliance. Okay, so they also receive directions on how to assign um, documents electronically in uh, Microsoft Excel. They can sign it electronically. Or if they do want to print it out, sign it, and then email it to you, they can certainly do that. Either one is fine. It is your choice and preference on if you have one on how they turn it into you. When within supervision with your staff, you will want to pull up the client's chart to ensure everything is corrected and chart is actually in compliance. Um, if there are any notated concerns of the client's charts or progress notes, ensure to fully review those items, okay? Um, so this is a great point, especially if there were some concerns of their progress notes. Reviewing some additional progress notes in supervision, give them pointers on how to improve their documentation with their progress notes, some suggestions on how to make them more professional, et cetera. Um, that is what supervision is for. Okay, um, if there are any lingering items that are waiting to be completed, continue to review and supervision until completed. Okay, so for instance, maybe we're waiting for consents to be sent back from the guardian. Um, you want to ensure that the staff member actually mailed it to them. So that should have been done before the end of the month of the corrections. Um, but just keep that in the back of your mind on um, every supervision. Hey, did you get back those consents from that, from that guardian? yes or no, and then once you finally do get those consents back, you can also, you know, take that off of your supervision radar. Um, remember, our goal is for all written consents to be completed within six months after receive that verbal uh, best practice, okay? Um, so that is one example. Another one could be maybe the therapist is behind and trying to complete assessments in a timely manner or getting the client into that DA clinic in your region to ensure that those assessments are completed in a timely manner, okay? Um, notate in the supervision form that the chart audit was reviewed. Um, so you guys should have received or will be receiving the supervisor um, training on how to complete the, the supervision form for staff. Um, one of the check boxes on the supervision form is chart audits and peer reviews. Um, when you're reviewing your chart audit with your staff member, please make sure that you check that box to note that you are reviewing the chart audits with your staff members. All right, so that is handout number two. The third handout is audit tracking instructions. So if you want to open up that one, okay. This is a one page handout. This coincides with the clinical 2021 clinical tracking form. Okay, audit form. Um, so QA and training manager supervisor will provide you access to one drive to complete at least monthly. Um, ensure to select your region or random new hire chart audit tab to complete data. Okay, so yourself or, I'm sorry, myself or your supervisor will provide you access to this form. Okay, um, this is on the OneDrive. This is form is that you will complete at least monthly for your staff members of when they're turning in documents. Okay, um, so once again, that one page handout will these those are the instructions on how to complete this um, document correctly. Okay. All right, let's go back to the directions. So. When putting in dates for your staff, you want to answer all questions for your staff in their designated row. Staff in column A is who you want to ensure all answers in the row is completed on. Do not use staff in column C. Okay, so let me show you that real quick. 
So as a supervisor, once again, make sure you're going to your designated tab, okay? Um, once again, the random new hire chart audit form is at the end, um, residential, central, west, west, uh, west, south, and north, okay? Um, staff member in column A, when you're completing all the dates, you will ensure that all the dates for, for example, this is Tammy, um, these are all dates for Tammy, okay? Everything will be completed for Tammy on this whole row there, okay? Do not use column C, okay? Um, so if you want to put your hand over it or just have a constant reminder that you are not going to utilize column C when completing it. Um, I did kind of hide column B because it's client's names and this is um, going to be put up on YouTube for you guys to watch. Um, so for confidentiality, I did not show the whole column B, but of course, when you fill out this form, the whole client's name will be notated there. Um, just for today's training, um, it's covered up a little bit, but column B is there, so A, B, C, and then so on, okay? Please pause this anytime if you need some additional questions, either write them down, or please notify your supervisor to assist you in completing uh, this, this, uh, uh, um, the Excel document correctly. All right, so let's continue in our directions. So right here, as a supervisor, it will be your responsibility to ensure staff are completing audits, doing their corrections, and reviewing and supervision. Initial audits and corrections are to be completed in the second team meeting of the month or supervision, especially for PMs. All dates will be completed by the 20th of the third month. So for example, February initials completed in February, corrections completed and submitted by the end of March, and supervision completed by April 20th, okay? And that will be the process every month, okay? So the next month, March, March will be, initials will be done in March, corrections done in April, supervision done by May 20th, okay? Um, so that's why we're talking about in that second team meeting, the corrections from the previous month should be done, and then initials for the following month or that month should be completed, okay? So as a supervisor, you'll complete all dates, all dates for columns D through I, okay? So these are the exact same columns here as it is here, D through I, okay? D through I. All right. So I have directions here for all D through I to making sure that you're completing them correctly. D is completed when column A staff turns in their initial audits on their coworker to, to their supervisor. So when your staff members turn in their audits, you will put that date in column D, okay? Column E, you will review the chart audit you will utilize the review chart audit handout to ensure staff completed the audit correctly before sending to the assigned staff member. When you send the audit to the staff, you will complete column E stating that that staff member received their audit. Note, it may not be your supervisee, okay? So some people get confused with that one. Um, I will use these people as examples. Okay, so I supervised Tammy, okay, for an example. Tammy turned in, we'll just utilize what they have here. Tammy turned in her audit to me on March 11th, okay. I spent some time to review it, okay. Um, Tammy was supposed to review Dana's chart. Um, so I reviewed the chart audit that Tammy did on Dana. Okay, and then I emailed it to Dana on March 16th. So I went to Dana's line and say that Dana has received her initial chart audit on March 16th. Okay, so that's why it says this may not be your direct supervisee um, and it will not be Tammy's line. Okay, because I sent it to Dana. So Dana received her audit on March 16th. And so I go to Dana's line and I put it on column E saying that she received her initial audit to do her corrections, 
Okay. So the initial audit sent to staff for corrections. Okay. So I sent Dana her initial audit for corrections to be made on March 16th. Okay. All right, let's go back to the handout there. So that is column E. Column F. Some supervisors like to CC QA and training manager when sending staff their initial audit, or some supervisors like to collect all their staff audits and send to QA and training manager at the same time. Either or is fine, okay? Um, they're both accepted. If some staff members feel like, or I'm sorry, some supervisors feel like it's easier just to CC the QA and training manager, myself or Kim on the audit forms, um, when you're sending it to that direct staff members. There are some supervisors who like to collect all the audits from their staff members um, and then send them as one big email to Kim or myself. Either way is fine. Um, but when you do send it to the QA and training manager, you will complete column F, okay? Um, so I can show you here in the example, okay? Um, once again, you can send them all on the same date if you're sending them as one big email of all your staff members, um, or you can send them in individually, okay? Either way is fine. Next one is column G. When staff starts, when staff complete the corrections and send you the corrected audit, you will complete column G, okay? So staff will make the corrections, when they email you their corrections, you will put the dates of when they emailed you their corrections in column G. Column H, as supervisors, you will ensure corrections are completed and uploaded onto the one or the O drive, excuse me, and the designated region folder. When saving the audits on the O drive, you will complete column H. If staff are assigned a random audit, upload corrections to the random audit form. Okay, so I will show you on the O drive on, um, yes, the O drive on where to ensure that you're completing these forms. Okay, as it states on the picture there, you will go to your O drive. So VPBSO, MH documents, VBHOH, MH documents. You want to go to the general folder third from the top. The first one is audits. We are in 2021. And then as it stated, each region is broken down. And then PMs has its own folder. Random audits has their own folder. Okay. When you click on your regions or your, or your staff members, um, each month will be in here. Okay. And then you can just click on that one and then save your staff members audits as their name, initial or corrections, correction audits, okay? Random chart audits, once again, in that folder, in that region, and then in that month, okay? PMs, yours is the same, okay? So open up your folder your region, and then your month, and you'll be able to save that correction audit in that folder of that staff member. If you need any assistance, please make sure that you do ask your supervisor to assist you um, in finding this folder on the O drive. All right, almost done. Last one is supervision. So column I is completed when you have supervision with your staff. So the date of your supervision is entered in that column, okay? Um, so that is column I, that is that last column of when you had supervision, okay? And then you are done for that staff member, okay? Column J is completed by QA and training manager. So by Kim or myself, okay? That is us, um, putting in the initial data that you sent to us um, into the data collection form. So once again, that is where you'll complete this document. 
Um, if you do not have access to this yet, please make sure that you email myself, QA and training manager, Gabrielle Bryson, or your supervisor for them to give us, for either of us to give you access. Okay. All right, so that's that handout, almost done. Last but not least is the mini clinical chart audits, okay? Okay, so this handout is six pages, okay? This is directions on how to complete the medical clinic Medical, mini clinical chart audit, sorry. All right, so at the top there, it says as a supervisor each month, you will review, you, you will be required, sorry, to complete a mini clinical chart audit on one file for each staff you supervise. This will be in addition to regular monthly chart audits that are assigned by the QA and training manager. Regularly reviewing files ensure that missing or overdue documentation is caught and corrected in a timely manner. Okay, um, so number five is the mini clinical chart audit. If you open it as an Adobe PDF, you are able to type directly in here. Um, some people's computer settings will open it as a Google Chrome um, browser, um, but for you to sign it, it needs to be as an Adobe PDF. So you want to right click it and open with Adobe, okay? Um, the, once again, the Google Chrome will not allow you to have this electronic signature um, for you to electronically sign it. Um, this um, form is editable, so that means that you can type directly in this form, okay, in all the blue areas, okay, or all the questions there. All right, so each month as a supervisor, you will choose one file from your caseload, from the caseload of each staff member that you supervise. This file will be reviewed and a medical clin mini clinical chart audit will be completed and returned to the clinician assigned for corrections. When providing staff the, sorry, when providing staff the mini clinical chart audit for corrections, provide them 30 days for corrections to be made and ensure they, re uh, they turn in and review in next month's supervision, okay? So any random chart audits or mini clinical chart audits, we give staff members 30 days to make corrections from the date that we send it. Um, it will be your job as supervisor to follow up in the next month's supervision to ensure all the corrections were made or continuously follow up on a monthly basis until the corrections are fully completed. All right, so let's go through this form. So to complete the edible form, fill in the client number the date you are completing the audit and the clinician assigned to work with that client, okay? Be mindful if it does take you a couple of days to fill out this form. Um, you didn't block off a big chunk of time to complete this. Um, the date that you send it out to that staff member, um, just put that date at that top um, to ensure that within 30 days from that date um, that, that, that that mini clinical chart audit is completed, okay? Check the chart for updated consents. Remember, they can be found under the document section of the client's file in SmartCare, labeled as consent bundle or individually as consent for treatment and release of information. Okay, um, so there's a visual for a consent bundle. Um, informed consent should be the forever consents. Update consents can be found on the O drive and the new hire and staff documents folder. So as you'll see here, um, if you have not seen them, um, which you should have, but you can always find them here. You can physically give them to staff, email them to them anytime to ensure that they have those updated consents and utilizing those right consents. We wanna make sure that they're deleting and getting rid of any older consents um, and utilizing this one here. Also in that same folder will be the release of information or standard authorization form. 
that one does need to be updated annually and completed correctly. All right, so indicates by putting yes or no, whether the forms are in the file, um, then list the date. Um, partial completed information should be notated in the comment sections and missing documentation should be listed as needed. Okay, so it is on the actual form, yes, no, date, partial, remarks. Okay, so that's what that's saying, referring to. Next, you will want to locate the demographic information under the client information C area. Check for the client's phone number and address are completed. Select demographics to ensure that both race and ethnicity is checked. If race is marked as unknown, staff will need to complete and mark as no. No dates is needed, okay? Comment in any, if any changes or corrections are needed. If this area, you, um, in this area, you can also check for gender identity, sexual orientation, and pronouns, okay? So no date is needed. So demographics, okay, that does not need to be completed. There's no dates for that. The next section is um, contact. So you will find the contact information under contact, see below. Um, contact should include guardian, emergency contact, and any other entities that a release of information has given permission to speak with. Ensure there is at least one person marked yes as emergency contact in the contacts list, okay? So the list of contacts at the bottom make sure that there is at least an emergency contact, yes, in that column there. Next, we're gonna check for the diagnostic assessment. This can be found in the document sections for uh, as you found consent. Um, just as the clinical audit form, the rest of the items are gonna be found in the document section of the chart, okay? So a lot of the stuff is the same. Um, this is just a little bit more clinical, okay? So locate assessment in the list of documents shown. Click on the underlined assessment. It will take you to the PDF version to read the full assessment. Ensure the assessment has been completed within the last 12 months. Keep the assessment open to answer next couple questions. Okay, so you need to answer the next couple of questions, reading the assessment and also allow you to answer some of the treatment plan questions. So information regarding diagnosis and DSM-5 criteria can be found in the clinical interpretive summary section of the assessment. The clinician complete, completing the assessment will have included diagnosis codes and symptoms that should have matched based on information in the DSM-5, okay? Um, if this information is not included and there are any questions, ask your supervisor clinical director for assistance. Document any needed corrections and the dates of the most up-to-date assessments in the file. All right, so the next section is treatment plans. Treatment plans can also be found in the document section. In Smart Care, it is called Care Plan, okay? And the list of documents shown. Click on the underlined Care Plan. It will open as a PDF so you are able to read details. We want to make sure one has been completed within the last six months. To ensure that objectives are measurable, they should be contained, they should contain the following information in order to make the measurable criteria. Specific. So objectives need to be clear and specific, not general or vague. It's easier for patients to complete objectives when they know exactly what they want, what they need to do. Most importantly, we want to make sure that they're measurable. Objectives need to be specific times, amount, of, amount or date for completion so you and your client can measure their progress. We wanna make sure it's achievable. Encourage clients to set goals and objectives they can meet. If their objectives are unrealistic, 
it can decrease their self-confidence or discourage them. However, goals and objectives should not be too easy either. Goals should be challenging, but also realistic. Relevant. Goals and objectives should be relevant to the issues listed in the treatment plan. When clients complete objectives and reach their goals, they should be closer to the place they want to be in life and as a person. Last but not least is time specific. So goals, objectives must be a deadline, must have a deadline. Goals might be considered short-term or long-term while objectives need specific dates to meet. A deadline creates a sense of urgency, which helps motivate the clients. So you will also want to review to ensure the ISP goals and objectives are supportive of the diagnosis, AKA the goal and objective should be written to include symptoms and strategies that are relevant, that are related to the diagnosis being addressed in the plan. So for example, this is an example of a measurable objective. So clients, Gabby, will meet with the clinician to learn and practice coping skills to reduce her anxiety level as evidenced by Gabby doing social activities with family and friends one to two times per week as reported by self and others, okay? So all of these components up here, one, two, three, four, five components are met in this measurable objective, okay? We know we're working on, we have our mental health symptom. We know that it's achievable. We can do this one to two times a week. That is our goal, okay? And the treatment plans are automatically reviewed every six months, right? Okay. Remember to add dates and remarks where appropriate to indicate any corrections that may be needed. All right, so the next section here, complete the required information by locating, locating the documents in the client's file in Smart Care, documenting whether it is present and the dates of the most current on file. Make sure to include any remarks or comments regarding your findings, okay? So the next couple of sections are notated here before, below, sorry. So outcome measures and safety plans can be found under the documents section of the client's file in Smart Care. So once again, same section we've been in since consents, okay? Remember, reminder, all VRS clients must have a safety plan. All LTC or community clients with a history of suicide, homicide, homicide ideations, or self-interest behavior should have a safety plan in their file that is updated and reviewed anytime throughout treatment when client has any suicide, homicide, or self-interest behaviors. If there is no history of suicide, homicide, or self-interest behaviors, a safety plan is not required, but it is best practice. So our best practice, what we really want is for every client to have a safety plan, okay? Um, clients are coming to us for mental health issues, um, so we always want to prepare for a potential crisis that may or may not come about. Um, so it's best practice for our clients to have a safety plan, but it's not required for them. The next three items to review are all related to progress notes. So progress notes can be found under the document section of the client's file in Smart Care also, okay? Um, making sure that you are reviewing that staff member as there could be multiple staff member um, billing for that client. Um, so making sure that you're selecting the right staff member and you're selecting the right progress notes. Once again, you want to review, you, um, you can open one a note by simply clicking on the underline. Um, we want you to review at least three progress notes. If there's concerns of their progress notes, of course, reviewing more um, and then notating those remarks there. So read the progress notes in its entire, entirety, then consider the following questions. Um, so the next page is the following questions. Does the progress note have the ISP goals and objectives shown? selected, okay? Does the intervention that were provided relate to the goals and objective? 
provide feedback in the mark, remarks column. Is the total amount of billable time for the notes appropriate for the intervention that were provided? And are the responses clearly notated, noted? And do they give a clear indication of the outcomes achieved from the interventions provided? And then is the service provided medically necess necessary? Does the service provided does the service provided benefit the client by addressing the mental health diagnosis or its symptoms? Okay, so you should have rewatched the medical necessity video. Um, all services we provided that we provide should meet medical necessity. Okay. All right, lastly, you should include in your own opinion if the file determined to be above expected, expected, or below expected. Summarize your findings, making sure to indicate any missing documentation or corrections that are needed to bring the file up to date and provide any helpful suggestions that will improve the quality of the services and documentation in the future. The mini clinical chart audits should be signed electronically by both the reviewing supervisor and the assigned clinician. If you still have any questions, please see page two for more helpful hints or ask your supervisor for assistance, okay? So on page two, there is definitions on this page that can help guide you in completing things um, if you do not um, remember how to complete the items on the actual form, okay? This red line here will allow you to sign it electronically. So you want to sign it electronically and then send it to your staff to make corrections. Um, and you'll see that is a review section and correction section. After corrections have been made, send complete audit to clinical supervisor director and upload to designated area on the O drive or one drive. So each region has their own specific area on where they save these many clinical chart audits. Um, they, they generally have a folder for you to upload them monthly of all your staff members that you supervise and ensure you get those completed by the date that your supervised spike to provide to you or at least minimally by the end of the month, okay? Once again, you can always refer back to this video to assist you or you can always contact your supervisor um, or Kim or myself to assist you. And that is the last handout, okay? So once again, if you want to save this mini clinical chart audit forms to your personal drive, to your desktop, where you can access this on a monthly basis, I highly suggest you do that. Um, because once again, you'll be utilizing this minimally monthly for multiple staff members, okay, on how many that you supervise. Um, so this, this um, file should be saved where you can access, this, access it on a regular basis, okay? So that is the end of the QA responsibilities. So once again, you should have this sign off, Supervisor Quality Assurance Responsibilities Acknowledgement. You want to put your name at the top and that we reviewed all of the items. So supervisor QA responsibilities, audit tracking instructions, how to complete the mini clinical chart audits, and reviewing chart audits. Okay, so we did all of those items here today. Once again, you can print it out and sign it, or there is electronic signature if you open it in Adobe. Okay, so print your name here. Okay electronically sign it. You will send it to your supervisor and they can also do the same. Thank you for joining this training. And I wish you the best of luck in your position as a supervisor, congratulations. And we appreciate you joining the ViaQuest team. Have a great day.